President, welcome to In Conversation. Thank you. Some commentators are saying that Timor-Leste, because you're small though, you are playing the China card. That you are, for example, prodding your bigger neighbor, Australia, to fulfill some of their promises by saying that if you don't, that even if you don't directly say it, you imply that you will cozy up to Beijing. Are you playing the China card? <laughs> well, in the, during the Cold War times, countries that were ignored or um, uh, bullied by the West, they would turn to Soviet Union. At the time, China had not yet emerged as uh, the alternative uh, superpower. Well, it is almost natural that uh, smaller countries, and not only small like Timor-Leste, mid-sized countries, Pakistan and all the others, uh, play the American card or the Chinese card. You know, uh, So China is an alternative, uh, whether it's better alternative, that remain to be seen. But um, when uh, the West, Europeans, Americans, and neglect Timor-Leste, uh, or sometimes impose on us unfair deals, uh, look, you know, when uh, uh, third world countries uh, try to borrow money from uh, Western commercial banks, it's 7%, 8%. There's much criticism of uh, China over the so-called uh, Chinese debt trap in relation to uh, Sri Lanka. But you know, uh, of the- You're not worried about the Chinese debt trap? We are completely, completely relaxed about it because we have zero loan from China. We are one of the countries in the world with the lowest debt per uh, our uh, GDP. Uh, like 20% or so. You are actually perhaps secretly glad to have that Chinese card to play uh, with Australia now, where you didn't have it earlier. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you can call it China Chinese card. I wouldn't call it a Chinese card. A, we have very good relationship with Australia, as we do with the United States, with Indonesia, with Singapore, etc. We will turn to China because China is a major economic player in the world. Uh, whether that is Chinese card or not, uh, I, I don't know. Do you see a day, though, that you might cooperate with China, not just with economic deals, because you have recently signed a series of economic deals with China, but do you ever see a day that you might cooperate with them on defense, no. on strategy? That, no. No need for ah, it. So, so that, you draw a line there. Yes, we Economic do. deals, but not strategic deals. Yes, exactly. Not defense yeah, deals. We, Why do you say that? Why is it that it would not extend to well, defense? Well, we have excellent uh, security defense cooperation with Australia, uh, a smaller scale New Zealand, with Indonesia. Uh, we have had uh, our uh, people train in Japan, South Korea. So, uh, and uh, we know, we don't need that. And besides, in any case, a responsible country, and we try to be responsible, we have to be sensitive to the concerns of our neighbors. We have to be sensitive to the concerns of Indonesia, our immediate neighbor, Australia, and Singapore, Malaysia. These are the countries that are closest to us, to the north and the south. And uh, so, uh, in terms of defense, security, cooperation, uh, there is no need for us to approach China.
you've occupied the post of foreign minister, prime minister, president. So you've had a long run as a politician leader uh, in Timor-Leste. What is the thing that you are perhaps most proud of that you've achieved within these 20 years? Most proud of is the country is absolutely peaceful, zero political violence, zero ethnic-based violence, religious-based violence, no uh, anti-West or anti-China or anti-Muslim sentiments from anyone. We have many thousands of Indonesians living there, Filipinos, Chinese, Americans and Portuguese, Brazilians. The country is very tolerant, very open. That's more my uh, biggest uh, happiness that it has down, turned out to be like that. Other than that, uh, we have, uh, in, in addition to that, we have been able to develop full-fledged democracy, imperfect, absolutely free media, and uh, free thinking, uh, free political activities. Uh, so we are not terribly efficient in running the economy, uh, but we, will, uh, we are getting there. Unfortunately, 40% of uh, people living in Timor-Leste are still under the poverty line. So why hasn't that moved more in these 20 yes, years? Yes, I am determined the next five years of my presidency, bearing in mind the constraints of the presidential authority, but in my country, the president, influence depends on how he or she manages relations with the government and the parliament. I have absolutely good relations with everyone. They listen to me. So priority for the next five years, elimination of child malnutrition, child poverty, mothers and malnutrition, mothers poverty. Absolutely guarantee food security, the investing more in agriculture, improve our education system. We might have a great political leaders, visionaries with ideas, but without a civil service and the cadres, the experts, very difficult for any leader to, de to deliver. So we are working on that. With the next few years, I believe we will do much better. Well, yes, the World Bank points out that really it's that it's human development. It's getting yeah. people to be more educated, to have better health. All of these things are, are key. Commentators sometimes say that, you know, in the early years, you spent way too much money in Timor-Leste on foreign advice, who were expensive and didn't do very much for you. Yes, uh, in the beginning we had... Uh, Your consultants. Yes, in the beginning we had hundreds of foreign advisors brought in by the UN, by the World Bank, uh, governments. Uh, some we didn't request, uh, some we requested. But after uh, 2009, when we uh, set up a program called Human Capital Development Fund, $30 million a year, sending young Timorese to the best universities in Southeast Asia, in Australia, in Europe. Today we have hundreds of Timorese with master's degrees, PhDs, acquired in the best universities around the world. Today, walking into a government office, you hardly see any foreign advisor. That's excellent, but isn't it also necessary to have baseline education for a broad base of people? If we compare and look at Timor's literacy rate. Literacy rate in Timor is still below, let's say, Cambodia. And definitely if you compare with Vietnam, which is up at 96%, Timor's down there at 70%. Now literacy is that really basic skill that people need to have in order to progress at all. So you may have PhDs, but isn't it more important also just to have ordinary people who can read and write? No, you have to have both. Our education system is free. Our health system is free. Life expectancy improved from before independence below 60 to today 70, 71. In 2002, at independence, we had 19 medical doctors. Today, we have, we have 1,200 medical doctors. But we cannot compare Timor-Leste with Cambodia. All these countries are older than Timor. 
join ASEAN much, much earlier. We are only 20 years old country. We started from below zero, from utter destruction. So uh, another 20 years, another 10 years, Timor will be completely different. But are you not worried that you have a generation of young people and you have so many young people, you know, such large swathes of the population in Timor are very are under 14. So 40% are under 14. But all of these persons, many of them, may not even know how to read and write, especially in the rural areas. Well, no. So this number, becomes a lost generation. The number is actually a decrease in the number of uh, illiteracy decreases every year. We have uh, schools for thousands and thousands of uh, We have a... Uh, overcrowded classes, uh, no, that's, I'm not worried about that. Uh, uh, I don't think uh, illiteracy is, uh, you cited a figure of... Well, it's supposed to be, according to World Bank figures, about 68% for the general population. Literate or illiterate? Literacy, have literacy, which means no, that about 30% actually may no, not be able I would to read say, or write effectively. I would say 80%. I don't always pay attention to... Uh, World Bank or UN data statistics because I know how old these data are. I travel extensively all over my country. I go to villages, towns, people's homes that no foreign expatriate ever set foot. And uh, no, it, it, uh, we have done uh, dramatic progress uh, at that level. What about Just to give an example, right now we have 60,000 young people in universities. We have 16 universities. At Independence, we had one university, 10,000 students. Now we have 16 universities, 60,000 or more students. Where did these youth came? They came from elementary school, they came to uh, high school and then to university. So they did a mushroom out of nothing. And uh, so, no, the education system, uh, uh, progress enormously in only 20 years. What about the prospects for these young people who are coming out? Will they have a job to go to? We are working on that and that's why we are trying to create conditions in the country for foreign direct investment to come. We are well placed in Southeast Asia, in the region, to attract foreign investors. President, no one can deny that you have been an incredibly courageous freedom fighter. But are you a good nation builder? Well, all I can say is that uh, my country, in which I contribute modestly because I cannot, I would not claim to more, to more than that, I contribute modestly. Number one democracy in Southeast Asia, with the freest media in Southeast Asia, zero political violence, uh, zero uh, religious, ethnic-based uh, violence, dis exclusion, discrimination. We have uh, the best possible relationship with Indonesia and all other countries. <laughs> so uh, that's part of nation building, that's part of a state building, and we have been doing very well better than many countries in the region. So now prosperity, getting people out of poverty, and having a good education. Well, yes, even that is journey. much better than 20 years ago. Much better, more pushing power. Timorese today, they travel, go holidays in Indonesia. Hundreds of Timorese studying in Europe at, with their families' expenses, not uh, scholarship from any government. What are sort of like the top three reasons why people should set up a factory in Timor-Leste? We are unexplored. Our uh, the tax regime is one of the most generous, lowest in the region. Personal income tax is 10%. Uh, 
zero uh, tax on uh, imports of, of equipment for uh, business, for education, and all of that. Still very low um, uh, minimum salary uh, wage compared with uh, China 30 years, 40 years ago. Absolutely peaceful, uh, tolerant uh, country. Uh, zero problems caused by the government or by political parties or whatever. And besides, you have very little competition. Any uh, FDI going to Indonesia, well, you have many Indonesian conglomerates who might not like your presence to compete with them. The same happened with the rest of Southeast Asia. So Timor is um, uh, going to be part, as part of ASEAN, part of an economy of 700 million people, $4 trillion, zero competition, and the country is picking up, developing with the gas coming from a greater sunrise. We will have uh, billions and billions of dollars in uh, investment that will be coming So, How will joining ASEAN make life better for the average Timorese? The benefit is, A, uh, more um, uh, immediate, like already beginning to happen, more job creation, more investments coming from across the, the region, across the world. So it will be Timor-Leste. Timor the economy will jump dramatically, will change. Look at the Cambodia, what was Cambodia 20 years, 30 years ago, and what it is today, one of the most dynamic economies of the whole of uh, ASEAN region, and uh, people's lives improved significantly. That's what happened with almost every uh, regional organization. You integrate the countries of the region in a single economy, you cooperate, mutual help, bring investments, the things improve. But it's not a magic pill joining ASEAN. Uh, ASEAN, besides geography, imposes some conditions to join. Precisely because when it embraces Myanmar, Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos, and so on, it embraces immediately with uh, very few uh, restrictions, uh, out of necessity, out of uh, self-interest. Because if ASEAN had not embraced Cambodia, for instance, well, China would have embraced. Uh, if um, uh, ASEAN would not embrace Myanmar right away, China would gladly embrace. So they embrace them without going through the tedious uh, process that Timor is going through. For us, it is okay. It, this pressure, all these uh, criteria, benchmark, and so on, has helped uh, making us improving our, our economy, our administration, human resources, and all of that. Ten years since we first applied, 2011, well, now we are more than ready. We are ready to join next year, 2023, and symbolically uh, during Indonesian presidency. If ASEAN wants a positive big note for ASEAN, let Timor join formally in 2023. Is Timor-Leste prepared to welcome investors? Absolutely. We welcome, we need uh, foreign investors whether from Singapore or the rest of ASEAN, from Indonesia, Australia, from China, from Korea. Do you have the roads and the educated population to actually therefore be the people who would be, and the market as well, given that it's only, it's only 1.3 million persons? Uh, well, Timor-Leste would be, uh, is open to foreign investors from whatever part of the world, in some key sectors, tourism, agriculture, fisheries as well as infrastructure because the next 10 20 years we are going to continue to uh, invest heavily in upgrading our roads bridges power supply and so on at the moment timor leste's government depends so heavily on its petroleum fund now i'm afraid that those funds are not <laughs> they're dwindling what's going to happen when the petroleum fund in timor leste runs dry. Where will you draw money a, from? A, uh, let me say, Timor-Leste today is an investor. We investing heavily in U.S. Treasury bonds. We have uh, more than 1,000 portfolios 
in the stock market in equities. From our investments in equities, we have received in the last few years $7 billion, just from the investments we have made with our petroleum fund. And uh, all the current news suggests that uh, uh, the joint venture that are investing in Greater Sunrise, including Woodside, Australia, South Korea, all now believe that the best development option for Greater Sunrise is bringing the pipeline to Timor-Leste. So maybe next year we agree on the development uh, option. And uh, once it, we agree, it will take six or seven years for uh, commercial production to start. But even before that, revenues begin to come to Timor-Leste. President? Thank you very Thank much you. for being on In Conversation. Thank you.